Natalia and Michaela are twin girls that were born on April 2014 at the Grand River Hospital. They are going to grow up with an environmental future to worry about if there are no changes in the way natural resources are being used. Today, half of all Canadians are exposed to unsafe levels of air pollution and there are constant warnings about the quality of drinking water systems. Canada is a nation that doesn't recognize a healthy environment for its citizens. That's why there are no national safety regulations for drinking water or binding air quality standards. Countries with environmental rights and responsibilities in their constitutions have stronger and better enforced environmental laws, smaller per capita footprints, and are more successful at reducing greenhouse emissions. The Blue Dot Project is a national movement based on the principle that every Canadian deserves the right to enjoy fresh air and clean water. Jim Martson joined the movement to help protect the environmental future of his grandson, Harrison. Martson is now one of the coordinators of the Blue Dot Project in the region of Waterloo and explains that decision-making should look into the future. You know, I know some of the arguments might be, uh, even at a federal government level, uh, that such uh, environmental rights and protections might slow down you know, uh, new economic development or you know, incur additional costs that might harm the business environment. But these are not really good, valid arguments, and, um, and they're really short-sighted arguments. The protection of the environment is a responsibility that is taken by all levels of government, federal, provincial, and municipal. Such control has led to unequal levels of protection. Ontario, for example, is one of the few provinces that has in place the Environmental Bill of Rights. Jay Flanagan works as a project manager for the Environmental Division of MT, a consultant firm for engineering and management. Flanagan says that southwestern Ontario is one of the hardest places to get a permit when dealing with environmental implications. I, I think right now we probably have a fairly good balance in terms of policy and still allowing um, companies to see southwestern Ontario as a good place to invest. The region of Waterloo is struggling to make a big environmental change because its decision-making can be overruled by Ontario's municipal board, which oversees the province's municipal laws. Councillor Yvonne Fernandez, a member of Kitchener's Environmental Committee, explains that the region is fighting with developers for protected land. So we're struggling right now with the regional, of, uh, regional official plan that has been at the Ontario Municipal Board. The developers um, want the regional official plan to be overturned so that they can develop more hectares of land. The region's plan to preserve 84 hectares of land was overruled to allow 1,050 hectares to be developed by 2030. Fernandez is concerned that areas where there is agricultural land and endangered species is lost to development. Many individuals are not dependent on the different boards to create environmental change, with many making a difference at a smaller scale. The Young Naturalist Club is a partner group of the Waterloo Region Nature. Young Nats meet once a month to explore different topics of nature, allowing kids to connect with their surroundings, as well as learn how to interact with the environment in a way that doesn't hurt. The government has made some progress by reducing different kinds of air pollutants, improving sewage treatment, reducing municipal waste, increasing recycling, and creating more protected areas. But there is still more to do to protect the environment for children like Natalia and Michaela and their future generations. For Spo TV, I am Laura Mancara.